Hi folks, this is Dr. Robert Sivers and I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Today we're going to talk about a question that I often get and something that perplexes and concerns people tremendously. And that is called the Dawn Phenomenon or the Dawn Effect. What is the Dawn Effect? Uh, the Dawn Effect is essentially a rise in blood sugar in the first part of waking up. Whenever you wake up, uh, uh, typically in the morning, for my people that, that uh, work at night, it's when they wake up after their, after their long sleep. And it's a rise in blood sugar. And if you notice that your blood glucose is highest in the morning when you wake up and you haven't had anything to eat yet, that is the dawn effect if you measure it. Okay. Now, for the most part, don't worry about it, but be aware of it. And we'll talk about where it comes from. We're going to talk about how to manipulate it and when it is of concern. So it is a ubiquitously common effect, the dawn phenomenon. But let's take a look at the science behind this phenomenon and explore strategies you can do to reduce your fasting blood sugar. Okay. First question is, what is the dawn effect and what causes it? Well, the dawn effect occurs as a transition between waking and sleeping. Think of this. The way I look at it is if your car is in idle and you're just idling along, that's why you're asleep. And then... As soon as you put your car into first gear and you put your foot on the gas, there's a rush of fuel from your gas tank to your engine. And the engine then produces greater noise, greater energy, greater smoke. That's the dawn effect in your body. So as soon as you wake up, there is a hormone. In fact, it happens actually before you really wake up. And I'll explain that in a second. But there is this preparation for waking that your body goes through to give your body energy. And typically, that energy is either going to be fat or sugar. And we'll explore that as we go through this. But for most people, the dawn effect is that rush of sugar as your body goes into first gear. And it usually occurs around the time of waking, but starts before you wake up around 4 to 8 o'clock in the morning. So three to four o'clock in the morning is when you start to see a rise in your blood sugar. And I'll explain that in a second. The exact underlying cause is not completely known, but I'm going to give you uh, the details as far as we know. It. And it is hormonally mediated or hormonally driven. There are multiple hormones involved. Adrenaline, glucagon, growth hormone are the positive hormones, as well as thyroid hormone. The negative hormones... The ones that are down are typically insulin and cortisol. Insulin and cortisol. Remember, cortisol is not a driver of the dawn phenomenon. I'll explain that in a second. And we've got a whole video on cortisol coming out and how poorly understood cortisol actually is. And these hormones in a healthy person should follow a circadian rhythm where they're up in the morning, down later on the day, and they, they go in a feedback pattern throughout the day. When that feedback pattern is disrupted, that's where you get aberrations of higher blood sugar in the morning or blood sugar that lasts high for a much longer time through the day. So the hormones that, that induce, that cause the uh, dawn phenomenon, the first one, okay? Think in your head, which one do you think is the first one? The first one is actually human growth hormone. Human growth hormone is that hormone that participates in repair and regeneration and also promotes the release of sugar into the bloodstream. And the growth hormone period, if you're having a good night's sleep, seven, eight, eight plus hours of sleep, occurs in the three to four hours before you wake up. So prior to waking up, you may see, and for those of you with CGMs for the diabetics, may see from three, four o'clock in the morning, if you're waking up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, you'll see a rise in blood sugar. And that's a growth hormone phenomenon. And growth hormone, insulin, T3, and testosterone work together as your storage and your production hormones. But growth hormone drives that early phase. And if you wake up too early, that growth hormone effect is somewhat, uh, it's still working, but it's shortened. And you don't want that. You want that growth hormone tissue repair or uh, 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 tissue building. You want that growth hormone effect to be as long as it can be. And it occurs mostly in the early morning. Folks, you know, I don't wear scrubs just because, just because. I wear scrubs because I'm a surgeon. I'm not operating right now. But last night, I was 
operating. We have sometimes have to respond to emergencies and I had a long day and I was dragging. And I, know, I want to be at my top of my surgical game. I want to be focused and attentive when I'm operating on someone when their lives are in my hands. And I knew I was dragging a little bit. I knew that I wasn't going to be eating through the day. And I didn't want to do that, but I didn't want to disservice my patients. So about half an hour before um, we started the surgery, I hit one of these ketone IQs. Now, did I need to know? I've got 30 years of surgery behind me. I can do that. But here's what it did. It got rid of a little bit of hunger. It helped me to hone in and focus, got me into ketosis where I'd even killed energy. And I was really alert, really awake and able to focus and did my best job with that patient. And the beautiful thing is, after I did that emergency surgery, after I saved that patient's life, and I uh, saved patient's life. No, that was, this is a true life-saving experience. That patient did brilliantly well and he's going to go home later this morning. That's what we do, and this helped me. Try it sometimes when you're hitting a speed bump in your life and you need focus and you need energy. Uh, as you wake up, as soon as you wake up, what gets your heart rate up, your blood pressure up? Your brain waking up does this. That's the first trigger, is your brain. And that's a, nerval re a nerve response by the vagus nerve. Increases your heart rate, uh, uh, a vagal nerve change increases heart rate, gut function, all of those things, triggers the pancreas, triggers the liver. So there's a nerve effect. Right after the nerve effect, a few seconds later, comes the adrenal effect. Adrenaline and the adrenocortical hormones get released into the bloodstream and release the adrenal effect. You can call it the fright or flight hormone, but the adrenal influence Increases blood flow to the muscles, promotes the release of glucose into the bloodstream, increases blood pressure, increases heart rate. So the dawn effect is predicated on the back of growth hormone by adrenaline. Now, here's the ratio that matters. In someone like most Americans who's insulin resistant, you have insulin resistance where you've got high levels of insulin, lower levels of glucagon, but your insulin is not able to clear the sugar. So under the influence of adrenaline and the influence of human growth hormone, you get this bigger surge of sugar because that sugar should be being used by your tissues to grow, to repair, uh, and as a source of energy when you first wake up. But if you're not able to get the sugar into your bloodstream, then the dawn effect is greater and lasts greater because of insulin resistance. And we'll discuss ways to modify that in a little bit. But that insulin resistance causes a prolongation and a higher effect of the dawn effect of the dawn phenomenon. And that is problematic to the body because that elevated blood sugar can increase your inflammatory response and inflammation by itself, an increase in the inflammatory response mediated by the endothelial cells being exposed to high levels of sugar exacerbates the dawn phenomenon. So it's this positive cycle of early inflammation, greater response, greater, greater inflammatory response. And then, and here's where the mistake is made by most people in the space. Then we release a series of hormones to combat the dawn effect. And the two major hormones that combat the dawn effect, cortisol. Cortisol doesn't cause the, the, the dawn effect. It gets rid of it. I'll explain that in a second. And then glucagon. Then we've got other hormones, amylin, some of the somatomedins and stomatostatins from the gut. There are a number of inhibitory hormones. Come from the brain, from the hypothalamus, from the anterior pituitary. But, uh, and that's a growth hormone, inhibitory hormone. There's a number of hormones that shut down the hormones that created the dawn effect. So the dawn effect is this rush and then you should shut it down. And cortisol, folks, cortisol is the anti-inflammatory, anti-sugar hormone. Cortisol is the anti-sugar hormone. So cortisol puts out the fire that's caused by adrenaline. And that secretion occurs 10 or 15 minutes after an adrenaline load, up to an hour or two. So don't judge this based on, everyone's cortisol, cortisol caused my dawn effect. No, it didn't. Cortisol is your anti-inflammatory hormone. Cortisol biologically reduces your blood sugar. 
And I've got a whole video coming out on cortisol where that is explained. But that is probably one of the most misguided concepts in um, the ketogenic space is the role of cortisol. Because everybody's measuring your saliva and you're going, uh-uh, doesn't work that way. If your adrenal hormones or if your stress level, stress hormones are always up, then of course cortisol is always going to be up to counter that. But you've got to look at the adrenal hormones, not the cortisol. Cortisol is an adrenal hormone. But the next one is glucagon. So the way the human body works, and this is a way to modify the dawn effect, is based upon your meal that you had the night before and whether you are insulin sensitive or insulin resistant, if you had a large meal, especially if you had a carbohydrate meal, but in the ketogenic space, even if you had a large big ribeye steak, that protein, that fat has to be broken down into individual amino acids, fatty acids by your, by your gut, goes up to the liver, and the liver under the influence of insulin has to rebuild those into proteins, into fat. And if you've eaten excessive amounts, the liver then turns that excessive amino acids into sugar, which gets released into the bloodstream, is there as part of the growth hormone effect, and then comes back to the liver and should be turned by the liver from sugar into fat. So the liver is going through de novo lipogenesis. However, if your meal the night before was massive, you're insulin resistant, that switches off the glucagon effect, or paradoxically, you can have high glucagon in the face of high insulin, and you're actually reduce it, releasing more insulin from gluconeogenesis, from glycogenolysis, the breakdown of sugar from your liver and being released into the, into the bloodstream under the influence of glucagon. That first phase of hyperinsulinemia and hyperglucagonemia causes that dawn effect. The first phase of glucagon is to release stored sugar from your liver. Now, if you only had a small meal in the evening and it didn't contain carbohydrates, your insulin may go up for a couple of hours, but by the time you wake up, insulin levels are going down, thyroid hormones are level, levels are going down, growth hormone levels are going down, and glucagon is going up. So you still have a small dawn effect based on the early glucose release from the liver by glucagon. But very quickly, under the influence of glucagon, you begin to release ketones and fat. So high, higher levels of glucagon, a glucagon surge in the morning, especially with cortisol, surge, shuts down adrenaline, shuts down insulin, allows fat to be released from the fat cells, allows the liver to develop ketones, and the dawn effect is limited and shut down and you get into ketosis and that can be measured if you're wearing a cgm you can measure that if you're checking your ketone levels with a keto mojo you may not be in ketosis first thing in the morning or you might be in mild ketosis but it should grow through the day that's why eating breakfast is the stupidest thing you can do in my opinion now some people like breakfast but for the most part your body is your liver is going to give you breakfast try to go deeper into the day before you eat that's another way to temper the dawn effect but the dawn effect is a natural effect as you go from being insulin dominant to being glucagon dominant. But then it should fade very quickly in the first hour or two of waking up. And that is when you become, uh, when you develop fat utilization under the influence of glucagon, low blood sugars, high ketone, higher fat levels, where the early phase is glycogenolysis, the breakdown and release of stored gl glucose or glycogen, and gluconeogenesis, the creation of new glucose, but very quickly. That should become ketogenesis and the release of free fatty acids under the influence of glucagon from your fat cells. And that should get rid of the, of the dawn effect. The physiologic processes that underlie the dawn effect occur in everyone, regardless whether they are insulin sensitive or insulin resistant. The difference lies with insulin and glucagon and how the body handles it. And you can modify that by your eating behavior. Healthy individuals have a high release of insulin right after a meal, and then it comes down and you release glucagon. In insulin resistance, the insulin effect persists, the glucagon effects persist, you've got a double hit of sugar, and that is not in your best interest. And we can track that with blood work. We can track what's happening in your bloodstream. We measure early morning, and that's why your blood work should always be done early morning fasted, to be able to capture this. We can look at insulin levels, we can look at glucagon levels, we can look at A1C levels, we can look at all of these levels. You don't need cortisol levels, you don't need adrenal levels to look at this. And I can tell you exactly how your body's performing. The dawn effect is not something you need to fix. 
an excessive Dorn effect response that is massive rise in sugar and a prolongation of sugar does need to be addressed. It should be fixed. But we've got to know where the problem is. Where is the problem? And we can, we can sort through that with blood work. That's why we urge everybody to come in, no matter how well you think you're doing, come in and let's do your blood work and figure this one out. Are you eating too much protein? Are you not eating enough fat? Are you eating too much fat? Are you still eating carbohydrates? Are you binge eating at night? All of those problems can be figured out and solved based on your blood work. Have you reversed your insulin sensitivity? Are you insulin suppressed? Got videos coming up on all of those right now. But the dawn phenomenon is a real phenomenon. It is a normal, healthy response. But when it's prolonged and excessive, it is an indication of problems. And we can fix those, we can help you to fix those problems. So the first steps are to get rid of the carbohydrates, to get rid of binge eating at night and restore insulin sensitivity. We can help with uh, uh, exogenous ketones to help you along the way. We can help with medications to help you along the way, but eventually you want to be free of all supplements and all medications and have a normal, healthy, brief glucose utilization phase before you get into fat utilization phase. Getting a good night of sleep, night of sleep is important because if you shorten your sleep or you have a bad night of sleep, your human growth hormone is screwed up. And that screws up the dawn effect as well. Obviously, reducing carbohydrate intake, reducing carbohydrate manufacture from protein. No, it's not okay to eat as much protein as you want to. You've got to understand how much is too much. And we can help you with the blood work. There's no number, no generic number that, that has that amount. Reducing how much you eat at night. Another phenomenon. And then doing something active, either at night or in the early morning, is a very, very important hormonal transition. And we can help you with all of that. So if you're interested in learning more about this, if you're petrified about the dawn effect, let's figure out whether your, whether your fear is rational or irrational. And if it's, if it's a problem, let's figure out how to solve it. If you want to get hold of me, if you want to set up a consult, if you want to get your blood work checked, if you want to hear us reflect on your dawn effect, Give me a call, 561-517-0642. But if you do get blood work done through us or anybody else, do it early morning fasted. Anywhere from an 8 to 12 hour fast. Because that's the best way to know what your numbers are. That's why we like to look at the blood work in the early morning. And it's a whole range of blood work. But give us a shout. If you like what we've talked about, if it settles your mind, or if you watch more videos on this channel to settle your mind, I've done my job. I am the Carb Addiction Doc.